Whether you're brand new to climbing or you've been climbing for years, you're likely looking for something that will help you with your hands. Over the last year or so, I've really been focusing on my hand care and I wanted to share with you what I've researched as well as what I've experienced so that you can enjoy climbing a little bit more with healthier hands. So in today's video, we're going to talk about skincare and it is part of a three-part series. So in part two, we're gonna talk about your tendons and in part three, we're gonna talk about your joints. So let's go ahead and dive into skincare. Unfortunately, I've had to deal with a lot of skin issues with my hands. I was in a rock climbing accident six years ago where I got second and third degree burns on both my hands. So I wasn't able to to use my hands because there was so much skin missing and so unfortunately I have a lot of experience with taking care of injured skin. In addition to that I've had tons of flappers and I've had tons of splits and splinters but there's also been a lot of research that goes into skin care so I'll go ahead and share that with you. Today I'm going to talk about three main parts of skin care when it comes to your hands. First is going to be what you should be doing before you start climbing, what you should do after you're climbing, and then also, if you get a flapper or a tear or a splinter, what you should do to recover from that as quickly as possible so that you can get back to climbing healthier and better than ever. So to start with pre-climbing, there are a couple of things that you should be doing as a checklist in your mind. Let's go through those checklists. So the day of going to climbing, what should you do for your skincare? Well, first off, make sure that you sand down any calluses. When I was younger, I thought calluses were really good for monkey bars and I built up those calluses so that I could be on the monkey bars as much as possible. Well, I made the mistake of thinking it was the same thing when I started climbing as well. The thing is, calluses are one of the number one causes of flappers. And flappers are when a chunk of your skin comes off and it's just attached by a little line, causing it to be like a flap. It's really nasty, uncomfortable, sometimes painful. What happens oftentimes is your skin gets caught on a climbing hold and when you fall or you move or you grab the hold, it catches that stick of your skin and it tears it off. Calluses are a raised part of your skin and actually makes it more likely to get caught on the hold. So by sanding the calluses down until until it's flush with your skin, you're going to be a lot healthier in your skincare so that you're going to get flappers a lot less frequently. Once I started doing this, this actually really helped me and I get flappers very infrequently. Almost never are they from calluses anymore. If you're wondering how or what you should use to sand down your calluses, there are companies like Friction Labs that have a skin file where it's essentially a nail file made specifically for your skin. I use one from Black Diamond Skin Care Kit. It's a sand block that has multiple sides with different grits. So lower grit will mean that it sands down the callus is really quick and then I use the higher grit to really smooth it out and make sure that it's nice and well won't catch on anything. If you're interested in that skincare kit go ahead and check out the link in the description below. I really like the kit and I think it's been really helpful for my skincare so you'll probably enjoy it as well. The next part after you've sanded down your calluses, it's time to look for any loose skin or skin that may be hanging off. When you're climbing almost every single day, sometimes your skin starts to shred and there'll be little pieces of skin. You may be tempted to pluck those skins, but it would be better to clip them because plucking them can pull on the healthy skin as well and cause healthy skin to get damaged. So try and either use a, a fingernail clippers or in that black diamond kit that I'm recommending recommending they have skin clippers. The difference being is instead of a rounded edge where the clip is, it is a flat edge so you can use it on your skin and without having to worry about angling it all funny. Next on your checklist should be to check your fingernails. Fingernails can break really easily even if you have super tough nails. So while you're climbing you may hear like a scraping noise or you may break a nail. Unfortunately I've broken my nails a lot where it causes a lot of pain because it goes back beyond beyond where growth of the nail is and it goes on to my finger pad. Definitely make sure that you are not only cutting the nails, but you're also sanding them down so they're smooth. That way they are less likely to get caught on something. If you're really worried about this or you have super brittled fingernails, a lot of professional speed climbers actually super glue their nail to their finger pad so they don't have to worry about it 
cracking or breaking while they're climbing. From what my conversations have been with professional climbers, I've been it's been explained to me that the super glue usually wears off within a few hours of climbing, so you don't have to worry about your fingernails being stuck there forever, but it is something to consider. Next on the checklist is to consider your skin, and if there's any sorenesses, you may want to tape your skin. You've probably seen climbers at the gym with tape on their fingers. Tape is used mostly for skin care as well as tendon care. Since we're not talking about tendons in this video, I'm just going to talk about skin care. But as a quick note, I don't recommend taping your skin for tendons either. And I'll get into that in the video when we talk about tendons and the research that's been done about the support that tape can provide. So let's talk about taping your skin. If you had a flapper last week and your skin is new, kind of fresh, definitely healthy, but you don't want to re-injure it, that's a great example of what you can use the tape for. So go ahead and tape over the fresh skin. Keep in mind though that tape is sticky, so if you're sticking it on a fresh flapper, when you take the tape off, the skin is going to come off as well. <laughs> because of its stickiness. So when it comes to flappers, I usually create a barrier between the sticky side and the flapper. I've actually tried using band-aids in the past, but band-aids aren't built for the rigorness of climbing and so it doesn't last. I usually sandwich a little piece of tape where the flapper is so it's sticky all around it and around my finger, but not on the flapper skin itself. I've heard some people put oil on their flapper so that it doesn't stick. That in theory sounds great, but I've been too nervous to try that. It makes sense, so it's probably good, but again, that's something I've been too nervous to try myself. After all of this is done, make sure that you're washing your hands to get rid of any extra grime or oil that may, may be built up on your hands from throughout the day. And then I also recommend using chalk. Some climbers don't like the feeling of chalk, but chalk actually has a couple benefits when it comes to skincare. The first thing that I wanna mention that's probably the most obvious is sweat. So it helps decrease the moisture on your hands. The value of this is sometimes the moisture in your fingers, it will kind of grab the holds. So if your hands are really sweaty, you'll kind of notice when you are grabbing a hold, it's sticky almost. And so your skin can stick to the hold and the same issues that you had with calluses are coming from sweat. So I would recommend making sure that you use chalk so that you don't have to worry about that issue. If you don't have sweaty hands, then there is one other reason to use chalk. But honestly, if you don't have sweaty hands, it's a much more minor benefit. And that is it creates a slight barrier between your fingers and the holds. If you are using like a fine chalk, the chalk will go in between between all of your all of the lines on your skin and it will create kind of a padding chunky chalk sometimes it can be grainy and so this doesn't have the benefit of that barrier where it actually kind of feels like little rocks on your fingers so just keep that in mind what kind of chalk you're using and if you don't have sweaty hands then I can definitely see a value in not paying for chalk for me I've figured out over the last couple of years what I consider my perfect cocktail for chalk when it comes to bouldering I like to put a base layer of liquid chalk down and then instead of reapplying liquid chalk I actually put a barrier of powder chalk on top of that so while I'm climbing the powder chalk may come off but there's still a little bit of a barrier with the liquid chalk below. Unfortunately liquid chalk and powder chalk they are not built equally. I have gotten used to all the liquid chalks that I've tried which I've tried four now. I've tried five. I've tried five different liquid chalks and I definitely have preferences. Uh, right now I'm using Evolve liquid chalk but my favorite liquid chalk is actually the, the Friction Labs secret stuff which is alcohol free and since my hands can be dry, they sweat, but they're also dr on the drier end. That is something that I've really benefited from is not putting alcohol on my skin and it the way it applies is really smooth and it's a good thickness of application. Plus the dry time isn't too bad either. And then for powder chalk, if you're interested, I used to use the uh, ultra fine unicorn dust from Friction Labs as well. Recently, I've been more into a chunkier chalk. So I've tried Friction Labs chunky chalk and they're super chunky chalk. It's okay. I really like the black 
gold, black diamonds, black gold uh, powder chalk. So that's what I would recommend for powder chalk. And if you're interested in those chalks, I actually have links for them in the description below. One last thing when it comes to pre-climbing checklist, and I'm not sure if I'm gonna put this as pre-climbing or post-climbing because of the timing of everything, but there are products that you can use that make your skin more durable and less sweaty while you're climbing. And I do absolutely recommend using a product like this. I'm just not sure if it's called pre climbing or post climbing or just do it anyway kind of climbing. So the one that I've been using most frequently is the Rhino Skin Performance and this helps decrease sweat production as well as increases the durability of your skin. The reason that I've been using this over other products like Climb Skin is that you can use it three times a night right before you go to bed and then as you're sleeping, it does its work. Whereas a product like Climb Skin, my biggest complaint is you are supposed to apply it one and a half to two hours before you start climbing. For me, I usually have to use the bathroom between those two hours and climbing. So I end up washing off the paste and I don't get the full benefits of it. So for me, having something that I can put apply a couple times a week has been really beneficial and easy for me to use. Now let's talk about after climbing. So when it comes to after you're done climbing, First off, make sure you wash your hands. Remove any chalk, any oil, grime, whatever you have on your hands. Make sure that you thoroughly wash it off and then apply some sort of moisturizer. This can be a basic lotion. I often use just a lotion that I, it's a locally sourced lotion here. Um, Climb On is a salve that I'll use if my hands are particularly sore. It's a lotion bar with essential oils in it that kind of help decrease if it's burning or something like that, it's uncomfortable. This lotion will help soothe that. I have used products like Joshua Tree's salve, but it's a little bit too oily and greasy for me. So if I'm okay with oily, I'll do Climb On. Joshua Tree is just too oily. And then also there is Rhino Skin Repair, which dries super well. So you get the benefits of putting on lotion with essential oils in it and it starts repairing your skin, but you don't have to worry about the greasiness. I share a car with my wife. So when she gets on the car after I've gone to the climbing gym and I use Climb On, she always gets grossed out because it's like oily on the steering wheel because there was oil on my hands. That's just something to consider you may for the Rhino Skins Repair, which I also use. And I really like how quickly it absorbs into your hand so it doesn't have that leftover oily feeling. As long as you're doing those two things, your after time recovery for your skin will be really good. So now let's talk about recovery if you get like a flapper or something like that. Unfortunately, this happens even now as I'm pretty experienced with skincare. I still occasionally get flappers. Maybe I'm negligent on sanding down a callus or I just, I'm not paying attention to how much I'm sweating, that kind of thing. So it does happen. And when it does happen, there are things you can do to make the recovery a lot less painful and a lot faster. So let's go ahead and talk about that. First, let's talk about splinters. It feels like a splinter, except there's nothing actually in your fingers. What has happened is there's like small split and you may not even be able to see it. You may just feel this burning feeling like you have a splinter. There are products to help specifically for splinters. Rhino Skin has one that I've used before and it works really well. I also think really any kind of climb on salve helps give that soothing feeling. If the split is really bad, you may have like the skin will split open, at which point you'll want to close it. And you can use like put some ointment on it like Neosporin, for example, and then you can tape it closed if it's really bad. If it's really, really bad, like stitches, then go to the doctor. But usually that's not the situation with climbing. Usually it's just really painful and super visible. And that's when you're going to want to put ointment on it, squish it together and tape it down so that it stays together as it's healing. The number one thing is not letting your skin dry out. I see this all the time where people just let their, they don't put any ointment on it. They don't put a bandaid on it or anything like that. And it dries out and it starts scabbing. The thing with your hands is this skin is isn't built to be scabby. So the number one thing is making sure that it's staying clean and moist. So wash it as well as you can. If you have burns like I've had, I'd put like room temperature, my hands in room temperature water with dish soap. This is what my doctor had me do. And I like swoosh it around because I couldn't actually wash my hands because I didn't have skin to 
have the friction was too painful. Really bad, there's a solution for you. Get a clean tubware or something like that. Room temperature water in it. Place your hand uh, dish soap and you can wash your hands that way. But if your skin is well enough where you can use friction, do so. Different soap burns more than others. So consider like a scentless soap if you want it to burn less. For example, um, heavily scented soaps tend to burn more because the ingredient that causes the odor is oftentimes can burn your skin. So that's something to consider. And then once your hands are washed, apply some sort of ointment. You can use Neosporin is something that my doctor recommended to me. If it's a minor where it's just a little piece of skin, climb on or rhino skin repair, for example, it just depends on how deep the wound is. The deeper it is, maybe use Neosporin. If it's more surface level, climb on is probably good enough. Then go ahead and cover it so you don't have to worry about germs or dirt getting in it. If it's really bad, some people use second skin and second skin does dry out. So if it's really bad, get what's called first skin, which is this thin paper-like substance that's covered in ointment so it doesn't dry out and then you can put like a bandage over the top of it. If it's minor then you can just use a band-aid. Go with what you feel is right. If you feel like it's really bad then go ahead and get the ointment, put some fur skin on it, and then wrap it in gauze for example. Otherwise grab a band-aid that will cover the affected area. Some people wonder if you should just keep the band-aid on while at night and this is also dependent on how bad it is. Either way you should should be washing it again and adding new ointment to it before you go to bed. If it's really bad, then yes, wrap it again. I always had mine wrapped and I actually had splints to keep my hands straight so that my skin would grow back without it being like stuck like this so my skin would grow back properly. So really it's dependent on how severe it is. If it's really surface level, then you're probably fine leaving it out. Just make sure that you have some moisture on it so it doesn't dry out in the night. Once the skin is built back a little bit and you have some fresh skin. At that point, Neosporin doesn't really do much, but Climb On is still a really good option. And then before you start climbing, make sure you tape that part of your fingers so you don't re-tear your brand new skin. Also, I tend to stay away from lotion that has glitter in it. I have I borrowed a friend's lotion one time and it had glitter in it and unfortunately, and I had to like scrape out the little pieces of glitter because it felt like little pieces of metal in my wound. So just keep that in mind, I tend to stay away from glittery lotions, really just basic lotions. Less scent is going to be less burny as well. It doesn't mean you have to have scentless lotion, but if it's heavily scented, maybe stay away from that while your skin is still healing. Now we've talked about what you should do before you start climbing, right after you are climbing, and then what you should do to help repair any damaged skin that you have. If this was helpful, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to share it with your friends who may also be new to climbing or who are trying trying to figure out hand skincare for themselves. And go ahead and click on the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can get notified when I do release part two, which is tendon care and part three, which is joint care. If you can't wait on the tendon care thing, I did do an interview with Eric Horst about nutrition ex and exercises that you can use for tendons care. So go ahead and check that mini series right here. Otherwise, stay tuned for my condensed guide on how to care for your tendons and how to care for the joints on your fingers. Thanks again for watching and enjoy climbing.